how much power does it take to keep an aircraft flying? With air transport producing 150 million tons of CO2 per year, a quantity that will double in the next 15 years, this is plainly an important physics question to ask. In fact, estimating the power requirement of a jetliner is surprisingly straightforward, if you know its mass, speed, and how it glides. First, let's consider a glider. If you want to make a glider at home, you only need to cut two pieces from a 2mm thick styrofoam sheet, with the shapes and sizes shown here. Stick the two pieces together with wood glue as shown, and tape two paper clips on each side of the nose. The two paper clips are to balance the glider properly in order that it flies without stalling. You can then bend the wings upward slightly, like this, in order to produce a stable flight in a straight line. Bend the tail this way if you want the glider to go left, or this way if you want the glider to go right. After you have shaped the wings, you can practice in an open space with the glider until you get a smooth and straight path. When a glider flies down a slope, all its potential energy at point A is used to overcome the air drag and give a smooth descent to point B at a constant speed. Similarly, the energy required for a full-size plane for, to fly from point A to B in a straight line comes from its engines, which act against the drag. The forces acting on the glider are the lift, drag, and weight. As the glider descends, the lift and drag balance out the weight, making the glider have a constant speed. The only difference between a glider and a plane is that the plane has a fourth force, the thrust. This allows the plane to fly horizontally. We can estimate the power required in this case by considering what would happen if the engine was turned off and the plane went into a glide. The angle the gliding plane makes with the horizontal gives the glide ratio. This is defined as the distance traveled vertically over the distance traveled horizontally. For motor gliders, this ratio is about 1 to 4. For small private planes like the Piper Warriors, it is about 1 to 10, and for large jet liners like the Boeing 747, it is around 1 to 18. If we look at the rate that the glider loses its potential energy, that is the power, we can see that it depends on the mass of the glider, the constant of gravity, the speed of the glider, and the angle the glider's path makes with the horizontal. The heavier or faster the glider is, the faster it loses its potential energy. Also, the flatter it moves, or the smaller the angle is, the slower it loses its potential energy. If you're interested in knowing how we derive this formula, we can check the potential energy formula. The rate at which the potential energy changes, that is the power, is given by the derivative of this formula with respect to time. The only thing changing over time is the distance, and if we take its derivative, we get the velocity term in the equation. Our model's glider's mass is approximately 6.1 grams. Its speed is a constant of 1.6 meters per second, and the angle it makes with the horizontal when it glides is about 14 degrees. Therefore, from the equation, we can see that its power is about 23.2 milliwatts. On the other side, the Piper Warrior's mass is about 1.6 tons. Its speed is about 60 meters per second, and the angle it makes with it, that it makes with the horizontal when it glides is about 5.7 degrees. From the equation, we see that its power is about 93.6 kilowatts. Finally, the Boeing 747's mass is about 378 tons. Its cruising speed is around 195 meters per second, and the angle it makes with the horizontal when it glides is about 3.2 degrees. Hence, we can calculate the power to be about 40.4 megawatts. Thus, with a little physics, we have connected the power requirements of a small hand-thrown glider with those of a large commercial jet. However, we must note that for power planes, what we have calculated is the mechanical power. The thermal power from the engines is about three times larger than this, but this power is lost uselessly in heating the environment.